Nations is the past president of the National Trial Lawyers Association. FDA reports have been coming in for about a year warning consumers about the dangers of a popular dialysis drug. But what the FDA isn't telling consumers is that the drug company covered up the dangers of that drug for years. I've got attorney Ben Gordon with me to talk about that topic. Ben, FDA let another one go through, another one that they made, uh, I suppose they simply made the same mistake, asleep at the wheel, not asking the right question, and another bad product is killing people in America. Granuflow, tell us about it. Yeah, Granuflow is a uh, product, a chemical product, manufactured by a company, a German company, with a big U.S. presence known as Fresenius, 55,000 U.S. employees, if you look right on their website. And you're exactly right, it's a failure in leadership. This company, we believe, based on the evidence we have so far, has known for possibly decades about the dangers of granuflow and the risk of heart attacks and people getting hemodialysis. In a nutshell, they produce the acid portion of a product that goes into a filter to help filter these people's blood who have uh, problems, diabetes and other medical problems and need dialysis, the acid portion known as a diacetate unfortunately boosts the bicarbonate that they have in their body so high that they end up with an abnormal pH. The pH level rises to such high levels it becomes toxic and they end up dying of a heart attack. And, okay, and the, isn't the ugly, the ugly, there's so many ugly parts to this story, uh, but tell us the, the, the company got an, in, an internal em, uh, a memo. The internal memo was very clear. It said our product is killing people. Here's how it's killing people. And they kept that quiet. Did I get right. that right? That's right. They knew before that memo came out that they had a problem. That person finally, the whistleblower, did the right thing and disclosed the evidence in 2011 and not until 2012 did the company finally realize the cat is out of the bag. We've got to come clean and tell people before we get into really hot water. But the reality is they knew long before that 2011 memo that this product was dangerous, that it was boosting levels of bicarbonate too much and causing these people to have heart attacks. And virtually the only reason they came forward was because the whistleblower forced them to. The whistle whistleblower actually disclosed the internal memo. The whistleblower told him, this is what's happening. We're killing people. Here's the, here's the physiology of how we're killing people. And this company, and talk about, who, what is this company? Who are they? Well, Fresenius is a German-based company with, you know, worldwide, they, they make billions of dollars, just like so many of these companies, producing these products to, to supposedly help cleanse the blood of these patients when in reality what they're doing is giving these patients a toxic overload of the bicarbonate portion of the solution. And why did they do it? This company with 55,000 U.S. employees gobbling up other companies of this type in the United States has done everything they can to simplify their procedure and cut costs in a way that they can save themselves money, boost the bottom line to themselves without protecting patient safety. What's shocking about a PAP and that shows a failure of leadership is if you go on their website and you look at who they say their executive leadership is, guess who's number one? A lawyer. Guess who's number two? An accountant. Guess who's number three? A chemist. They don't even have doctors. They're not even talking about, you know, a company that shows as their own proud leadership medical doctors who, the one doctor they list on their website on the first page is their executive leadership is a guy they just hired three years ago because they're trying okay. to clean up their image. So here they come up with a product that if I got the numbers right, Ben, correct me if I'm wrong, but if this granuflow has, uh, has the ability to cause a six to eight fold increase risk of sudden cardiac death. Is, is that correct? That's right. And the, the numbers are, are staggering. And the, the reality is that based on the patents that they had applied for and that they knew about in their 510K, it's another one of these 510K procedures where they skirt the more onerous regulatory route so they can get this product to the market quickly, showing their own files that at least 10 years ago, they knew or should have known that this product had the propensity to boost these bicarbonate levels, become cardiotoxic to the people. Six to eight times the risk of, of, of cardiac sudden death. Well, okay, so here, here isn't the real problem here that they have this memo, 
And rather than sending it to doctors, which they could do with a Dear Doctor letter, rather than having any publication about it, rather than having direct communication with the patients, they know exactly who the patients are, exactly who the doctors are, they know exactly where the product's being used. Rather than doing that, they put it in their file cabinet and they cover it up. How often do you see that in this industry these days? Well, that's exactly right, Pap. I mean, it has become endemic in this industry that companies who have inside information and knowledge about clinical safety issues and problems for patients and problems for doctors who are treating those patients, instead of letting those kinds of data points be central in their focus, like Hippocrates said, to do no harm, instead of focusing on those things, they stick those in a file cabinet and the regulatory people get no say-so in what happens. Instead, the marketing people take over and say, no, that's bad for business. Business, we, we're not going to talk about that. And in the end, we'll have hundreds, if not thousands, of people die from this. Ben Gordon, a, as usual, thanks for following this story, and uh, we'll follow it more as it develops. Thanks for having me on, Pat. Ben Gordon is an attorney who's taken on some of the biggest drug companies in America.